Today I want to talk to you about something that fascinates me. Things that you cannot do easily with digital photography alone without optical help. Of course, it's a broad subject and it's a briskly moving target, so I'm sure that you can do all this digitally and it'll be doable soon enough. For example, uh, with a really nice lens, you get that creamy bokeh, the blurry background that I don't have here that uh, looks so good in portraiture. And Apple does a really nice rendition of bokeh in the iPhone when you turn it to portrait mode. It looks really good. I've got these three cool filters, physical filters in my hand right here. Let me get them. Three cool filters that you can't easily replace digitally. And I'm gonna go into a lot of detail about one of them in particular. Before we really dive in too deep, let me just show you the, the, the other two. And that is, first one is really obvious. It's gonna be this guy right here. This is a circular polarizer. And you probably have one if you're a serious photographer, you got one of these things. And anybody who's ever used polarized sunglasses and anybody who's ever looked through one of these things and seen how it removes the glare from car windshields and from water and lets you see through things and how it makes the sky look navy blue in certain portions on a bright sunny day. Well, these things are awesome and you cannot polarize light digitally. You have to have it done optically. Therefore, you need to have one of these things. It's a critical element in your toolkit. You probably already do have one. Second one I'm going to show you is this guy. Now, I don't know if you can really see what's going on here, but I'm going to rotate it this way and I'll show you a close up. This is a filter that has part of it dark and part of it clear. Now, why would you ever want that? Well, have you ever taken a picture of a beautiful sunset and it just doesn't look right to you? When you saw the sunset, it looked gorgeous. And when you see the resulting photo, the beach is black. Or the beach looks great, but the sunlight is all washed out. Digital photography can do great things with HDR, but there's nothing quite like removing the light before it ever hits the sensor. And that's what this does. You just put the darker part at the top and the lighter part at the bottom and take a picture of your sunset. Here's an example of something I thought was going to be interesting. That uh, was just a sunset I saw one day and I took this picture from my car. And see how the front is all dark and everything? That's familiar, right? You probably have photos like that in your collection. But then when I used this filter and another time, I took this picture. And notice how you can actually see the speedboat. If I had not used this filter, everything in the foreground would have been black. You would not have been able to see the speedboat nearly as well. So that's what this guy does. Let's move on to the one I'm really interested in today. This guy. Look at that thing. That is black. This thing is pitch black. This is so black that when I look through it, it looks like, you know when you're going to the bathroom in the middle of the night and you're walking through the dark and you can barely see the shadows of things? In a brightly lit room, that's what this looks like. It is super dark. You know those tints that people put on their car windows that are uh, of questionable uh, legal status in our state, in New Jersey? You're not allowed to have those on your front side windows. And it seems like half the cars on the road I see have limo black tints all over their car. I don't know how that works. But those really, really dark tinted windows are typically 5%. That's the darkest they make them, meaning it allows 5% of the light through. This thing lets 0.1% of the light through. This is a neutral density filter. This is 10 stops. Each stop of light in photography terms is half of the light. What this does is it cuts light in half 10 times. Let's figure the math out. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 
256, 512, 1024. One one thousand twenty fourth. You can round that easily enough to one thousandth. This lets one one thousandth of the light through. In fact, the rounding is so common that that's what's printed on this side. This says it's ten stops and one thousand x. So what this will do is it multiplies your shutter speed by one thousand. That's the essence of what this thing will do. Of course, we're talking about the exposure triangle, therefore you can handle that 1000 any way you want, but the essence of it is it multiplies your shutter speed by 1000. Why do you want that? How do you make a photo like this? Look at all that water. Doesn't that look beautiful? Imagine on a bright day, could you take that photo? How about this one? Again, could you take this photo on a bright day? Before I tell you the nitty-gritty details of how this works, let me just tell you how to use it. Buy one of these things online. It's called a 10-stop neutral density filter or a 1000x neutral density filter. Get a really good one. And you might want to buy step-up rings so that you can get one size and use it on all your different lens sizes. Get that. Then put it on your camera. Set your shutter speed to what you want. We're going to go to T and we're going to use the internal setting to set that to four seconds. Water looks good. The butter zone I found is like two to four seconds. So let's just say we set that to four seconds. Then set your aperture to whatever you want for artistic reasons. Let's just say we want to have our waterfall, stones and everything around it in focus. So we set it to F16. Now take your ISO and set that to auto. There we go. And let the camera do the rest of the work. This is a mirrorless camera, and of course the image is going to be shown on the back here. If you're using a DSLR, you have to put it in live mode where the mirror locks up because you're not going to be able to see. You're going to look through the viewfinder and you're going to see black. The thing is like welder's goggles. So put it in live mode. That way you'll see what the image is going to be on the back. And then you can focus and compose your shot. There may be a setting you might have to set which uh, controls whether the camera shows the image as it will appear when exposed versus trying to always make it look good. I don't remember if I had to do that, but in any case, you'll know it because you'll put this thing on and you'll either be able to see the image or you won't. So set it all up. Put the camera on the tripod. You are taking a four second exposure after all. And then take your shot. If you really want to be fancy, you can use one of these. And this camera accepts one. Put it a little old school. And you use it because you don't want to shake the camera. It's probably not going to be a big deal with exposure like that. But you can either use a shutter release or use the timer and set it to a two second time delay so that when you press your shutter, you take your hands off two seconds later, it takes the shot. And you're golden. Let me tell you how this thing works. It's not that complicated, but this is the, uh, in photographic terms, imagine that you want to use this camera on a bright sunny day. Now, old time photographers use a rule called the sunny 16 rule. What that says is you set your aperture to F16 and it doesn't matter what lens you have, what camera you have. F16 is F16 the world around. It's just an amount of light that's coming in. So if I set this lens to F16, it's the same as you doing it on your Nikon or somebody else doing it on your Canon. Then you look at whatever ISO film you put in your camera, because of course on a film camera, you put a roll of film in and that roll of film has a natural ISO like, 
we'll assume we put ISO 200 in it. Great. And then all you need to do is set your shutter speed to match the ISO. So if you have ISO 200, you set your shutter speed to be 200. On a bright sunny day, this will give you proper exposure. That's the Sunny 16 rule. If you have ISO 800 film, you would set your shutter speed to be 1 over 800. And of course, my camera doesn't have a 200. It goes 1 to 50th. So you finagle it. Okay, it's going to be a little underexposed because it's 1 to 50 instead of 1 to 100. So then you might open it up just a third of a stop or something on a lens. But this gives you a starting point. Well, now that we're using our sunny 16 rule on a bright sunny day, and we've set everything to be the ISO 200, the shutter speed of 1 to 50th of a second, and our aperture of f16. What if we want to take a photo of the waterfall and we want to take a four second exposure? So we go here and we change our shutter speed. We dial that to uh, four seconds. The camera has to adjust exposure to match. And there's only so many levers that the camera can pull in order to reduce the amount of light coming in so that you can do that whole four seconds. It can change the ISO, it can change the shutter speed, and it can change the aperture. Now, we're not going to change the shutter speed because we wanted four seconds. So the camera can only change ISO or aperture. The ISO, we're in the basement. This camera in my hand will only go down to ISO 200. No more you can go. Aperture, same problem. We're in the basement. This aperture of f16, that's as tight as this little lens will go. I don't have an f32 or anything like that. This just goes f16, that's it. So the camera cannot reduce the exposure anymore. And if we take a look at what we've done, we've taken 1 250th of a second. We've multiplied that by 250, give us one second, and then multiplied that by four to give us four seconds. That's 1,000. Put this guy on and we suddenly taken care of the problem. We're dropping the light coming into the camera by a factor of 1,000 and now Everything will be perfect. Again, don't worry about all these details. Just set your shutter speed where you want it. Set your aperture to something nice. Set your ISO to auto and let your camera do the rest of the work. These kind of photos are really neat and they have this neat artsy feel to them and you just cannot produce these directly without doing manipulation any other way. I think these shots are awesome. Go out and have fun. Thank you for watching.